So tonight I've got the honour of speaking to two members of one of the UK's leading groove metal bands. I've got Bez and Paul from Stoke-on-Trent's Ball Deep. Welcome to the Razor's Edge, guys, and how are you? Good, very good. good. Yeah, all good? Excellent. So um, how's life with you at the moment? You uh, back to work? Are you out of furlough? Are you working all the way through everything? How's it been? Uh, well, we both work... We both work uh, we <laughs> work for the same company. So we've been back in since like last June. Yeah. yeah I think so. June, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, back, back to normal pretty pretty quickly with work, but getting back with the band has only sort of recently yeah. happened. Yeah. With um, you know, we sort of followed all the all the all the rules that were in place. Yeah. So we've recently got back in. Um sort of practicing again obviously we were we'd, just before lockdown we recorded um we were recording with uh with sam at uh, lower lane studios and then i think if, if my memory serves me right we sort of mid lockdown when it eased off a little bit we did didn't we do a track then as well I think. yeah we went back in with them didn't we yeah so we might ma- we managed just to finish the first part of this this next recording yeah. sort of slotted in with lockdown nicely so we've got back in the practice room and um we're just trying to sort of get the the ready for the release date of that really which we've had to sort of delay with everything that's gone on sure sure, sure. It's, it must be you must be desperate to get back and doing stuff that you would have done for normal a couple of couple of years ago yeah oh god yeah yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I think every band feels the same, you know. I, um, hopefully, everything will sort of go up with a boom. Really, you know. Hopefully, yeah. people realised what they've what they've missed and what they've not been able to do, and hopefully, they'll appreciate it a bit more. And and it'll all come back with a bang once once everything's free to do so. Fingers crossed. So let's go back to the beginning because you're celebrating a decade now, aren't you? If I'm if I'm right. Which is yeah, a long God. time in uh, in music, but uh, so congratulations on the big one zero. But for uh, those who don't know much about the band, give me a quick kind of overview of how you formed and uh, what kind of music you'd say you play for those that have never heard Balls Deep before. Go on, Baz, I'll let you uh, crack that right. one. Okay. Um, yeah, so back late 2010, um, me and Paul have both been in other bands. Both bands are disbanded. Uh, me and Paul have been, you know, mates for years and years anyway. So we decided just to kind of like start getting together and jam. Um, we just kind of took shape from there, really. Uh, we went, originally we were just kind of like, oh yeah, you know, let's get together, have a bit of a jam out and, you know, get a couple of the guys that we know in. And, um, and then just kind of escalated and we were just like, why bother stopping? Yeah. You know, so we just like started getting more and more shows from it, and then you know, a couple of like you know, line changes, things like that. Uh, and we just end up with the guys that we got now, and yeah. that's it, really. We just you know, we're all playing with each other, not like that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those, 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 those vans get a bit sweaty when you're on the road. I won't say anything, don't worry. <laughs> We won't go to reasons why. Yeah, well, <laughs> gotta do what man's got to do. So, um, <laughs> let's move, man to do. Yeah, let's move swiftly on from that. So, um, obviously, <laughs> um, Pantera play a big part in the band's influences. I think that's that's clear. But yeah, and anyone that listens to you will, will will pick that up. But there's lots of other influences as well. So, who outside of that are your are your big influences in terms of? Who shaped how you how you perform so best in terms of your singing and Paul your, your guitar playing? I think one for both of us one of one of our biggest influences at the time and, and when we were sort of stuck together talking about what we wanted to do and what we wanted to stay away from at the time um, <clears throat> before we'd even sort of got together in a practice stream. Snot were always one of the bands that yeah sort of came to yeah. the forefront that sort of. Uh, punk element that that snot sort of brought to the table with with the with the metal. Yeah. So we always said we wanted to do that, and we and and, and part of the goal was always to stay 
uh, fairly basic, really. Um, mm-hmm. You know, not delving too much in any sort of tech side. We basically always said that we wanted to play something that we could play while we were drunk. <laughs> so, so that we could, we could go to gigs, not really worry about too much about what we've got to do other than have a good time get drunk and still manage to pull a performance off. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like the genuine sort of only goal that we set before mm. we started writing songs. Yeah. <laughs> so we, just kept them, we kept them as simple as possible, really. And it, I suppose we've, over the years, we've developed and, and put little touches, certainly since people like uh, like Tim that have come in, who's much more sort of into the tech side of... yeah. Of, of music and of, of even of just recording and, and sort of we're much more sort of dinosaurs than he is and way more up to speed with all the tech side and video filming and all this. So without Tim, really, we, we wouldn't be anywhere, you know, because like I say, we're such dinosaurs that we just, <laughs> we don't learn anything new. Tim likes to be organised. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- yeah, we're definitely not that. No. There's only there's only room for one dream theatre in this world, isn't there? So you don't need too many people to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely isn't us. Definitely <laughs> isn't us. It's just no. an excuse for not being very good at our instruments, really. Well, wow, you're, you're doing yourself <laughs> down. Let's let's get on to the to the new record to, so we talk about that because that's the, the key reason for the interview and I'll ask you a couple of other questions afterwards. But um I've had a, an advanced copy, so I've been getting familiar with the uh, with the album Temperance. Um, Twenty two minutes. It's short, sharp, brutal. Um, first part of a a trilogy of albums, I understand. So tell me a little bit about the whole concept behind the the new stuff and how you're planning yeah. to release it and stuff. Yeah. So the so the idea was initially that we we were going to do it in sort of two or three parts. A few reasons for that. Obviously, the money side, we, we don't like to do sort of Kickstarters or, or fund, you know. Yeah. We like to sort of fund everything ourselves. We've always sort of stuck by that. Um, so, obviously, part of the reason um, was being able to afford to do it in, in sort of three smaller parts and, mm-hmm. and, and keep keep everything fresh and regular because, you know, if we sit in, in a room and write – over sort of a, a year or so and, and trying to fit gigs in and all that. By the time we get to having a full album's worth of stuff, some of those songs to us are a year, maybe yeah. two years old, um, you know, and, and we wanted to, to sort of get a song down while it was as fresh as it could be, you know, because I think that comes across in the, in the recording. And also... Um, you know, there's such a there's such a small promotion time in in doing an album. You know, you work so hard and, and for so long to get this this album out, and then you put it out, and within three months, it's sort of gone and forgotten yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so especially certainly with bands our size. Yes. Um, so so what 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 we we sort of thought would trial really is to is to basically break the album down into three parts yeah. and release it into three smaller albums. And then once we'd and, and release them digitally, and then once we'd sort of put the three parts, push it all together into, uh, okay. into a man thing of an album, really just, just that way we can, we can constantly keep the social media fresh Yeah, because we're obviously we hit the studio and then, release the first part and gig the first part. And then while we're gigging the first part, we're writing the second. Okay. And then before you know it, we're back in the studio. Give it So it gives us a constant, fresh approach to social media, which we're not very good with. Uh, and, and, you know, we didn't want to keep sort of sharing the same stuff for sort of a year, you know, and yeah. trying to yeah. keep everything interesting. So we just, we just thought, Money wise and, and and all 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 of the forms that it would suit us best. So that's what we're going with. Sure. And has has the um the pandemic influenced that or was that the decision anyway? No, that was that was always the decision, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah we, we definitely decided as a group to do this before it all, all the pandemic has done is slow the process down. Yeah. So um, you, you've, you'd already recorded the first, you said you, you've done the recording last summer for Temperance. So yeah, so we did. Hold it we, back. Yeah, we recorded um, the first half of it just before the pandemic. Right. And then we recorded, went, like I say, when it lapsed in, in the middle. Um, I, I don't even know what month it, it was. It, a, a whole time has gone out of, out of the window. But, um, yeah, when, when we eased off, we, we managed to nip back into the studio to finish it. And then, obviously, we went into a second wave again. Yeah. Um, so we've sort of, we've held on to it since the second wave, really. And we've been waiting to come out of this. To put, to put a release date. We didn't really want to release it and not be able to back it up with any gigs or anything like that. Yeah. Because yeah. we were worried that it you know, just sort of go to the wayside. We want to get as much attention from this first release so that the second release hopefully will have even yeah. more attention and people can then go back to the first and, and so on and so forth. Sure. So, so fingers crossed, obviously, that... Uh... Boris does follow his route map and actually allow you to play some gigs now that you've got it coming out in the end of the month, yeah? Yeah, that's right. I think I think our first gig that we've currently got booked up is on the 20th of August at, um, at the Arches in Coventry, mm. yeah. which is with uh, Wired, Callous Hands and Chaplin, is it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So and then we and then we're playing August. Uh, we're playing August the twenty first in Wales. But that's not hundred percent sort of confirmed with venue and everything yet. But but yeah. Okay. South Wales. So or... uh, Mid Wales. Okay. Mid Wales. Right. Okay. Well, keep an eye out on that. It depends where in Mid Wales it is. Because I'm in the south. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It takes weeks to get to Mid Wales from the south. You know. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. So coming back to the album, the the concept, I think the the full title is Temperance, Death, and the High Priestess. So I assume that it'll be the three parts will be the names of each of these segments. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. from what I read of the the blurb that came with the album, it's about a reversed meaning of the tarot card which bears Temperance the same name and that. How? Where did you get? I mean, it's quite an interesting concept of a, an idea for an album. Who who came up with that? And where did you get it from? And how did you form it? That was kind of a a mixture between me, Will Harris, who's a bass player, obviously, and um, and John Pedley, who's the who's the artist. He's yeah. doing the art with yeah, all three parts and all that. Um, we were just kind of talking to him and saying what we'd like to do, and we would, you know. We're throwing around these ideas of the three part thing and, and also the tarot card thing. And um and it just it just it just felt like something that was right to do. You know, it was a good idea. All three of us kind of came about with the same kind of decision, same time. Yeah. And we decided to roll with it. I you know, I picked out I looked through um you know, like kind of a list of a list of tarot cards, things like that. I know yeah, a bit yeah, because, yeah. you know. Um, and they seem like they're kind of like most fitting. Yeah, sure. For life. How life's kind of been in the past and where it's taken us and where it is now, really. So, yeah, so yeah just looking like the right right kind of thing to go for. Sure, sure. No, and the the the, tr the tracks. I mean, they're distinctly you can you can identify that it's you, but each one of them has a distinct flavour. I think they're they're not. They're not five tracks that sound the same. There's there's differences in every one of them, despite the fact that they're definitely your yeah. band. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm not going to ask you a stupid question like, did you mean to do slightly different? Because it would be a bit crap if you wrote five songs that sounded exactly the same, but they all yeah. feed into each other. So how did the writing process happen? <clears throat> so generally with, with the, the writing process that's always sort of happened through sort of all the other albums generally um one of us me or will will co come in with a riff idea and uh, normally we sort of throw the riffs between us 
mm-hmm. you know, just over recorded on a on a phone, just sent over WhatsApp, um, and then and then we'll we'll get to. We, we don't give them too much attention, just one riff, maybe two, you know, sort of, and an idea, generally an idea how we want the song to start. So we'll we'll have, I mean, the way I work, I'll generally just think about the intro of a song it never really comes from the chorus or or the or anything else so it's generally just one riff and sort of how you want to kick it in you mm-hmm. know you've sort of got a few songs in mind whether it be off a of slipknot or a pantera or or whoever and then we just go from there and because we've all slightly got different very similar taste but also sort of widely different in other ways um, I think we all just bring our own sort of um, taste to the table, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not very often that someone will put something in and go, oh, that isn't working. It just always seems to it seems to come together pretty easily, really. I don't I don't think we in, there's definitely thought, you know, we, we've definitely approached it before where if we if we're two songs in, we're aware that we want to make the next one sound different from yeah any any of the previous two but i don't think we think too hard about what you know uh, about trying to necessarily do anything particularly different we just tend to let it go off in its own sure. in its own sort of direction yeah and this this is the first um recording stuff you've done with tim is that right yeah, yeah. well uh, te- technically no, uh, we we Tim filled in for us for uh, however many years ago, three years ago. Okay. He did a whole show three or four years ago. He did a whole show, whole show of gigs with us, right. a lot of dates uh, because our previous drummer Rob um, stepped away from the band um, at, at that time mm-hmm. and left. So we had a load of dates. Uh, filled in which Tim which Tim stood in for yeah um, we tried to get Tim to then stay um, but Tim couldn't at the time due to he was going away working away so we ended up on this big whole auditioning drummers <laughs> it was an absolute nightmare yeah um, <laughs> and Rob after all that, Rob, Rob decided that he wanted to come back it was about a year later I think wasn't it yeah um, so then Rob came back but oh sorry to answer your question in, in the meantime of doing those mm-hmm. those dates we actually went into the studio right. to record a single that we had written with with Tim right yeah um, so we did actually record one, one track that we released called Surrender that we released with Tim. And that ended up being on the last album um, and on the eighth day album. Okay, yeah. Um, we re-recorded it for that one at a different studio with Rob drumming. So, yeah. yeah. So we technically we're, Tim has been in the band before, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a full, like, the first full length thing he's done with, yeah. isn't it, really? Yeah. Thanks, yes, mate. Yes, yeah, I confused myself then. <laughs> I just try to keep up with you. Great. So during, I mean, obviously, like everyone else during lockdown, you've been trying to keep people interested on social media, on Facebook and stuff, and it's every band struggles with it, even if you are very tech savvy and keep it to do it. But one of the things that I noticed on your Facebook that you did do was, was a cracking cover of the, uh, the blood, the sweat and the tears, the machine head track, which was brilliant. So I wanted to ask about that because they're a band, I think get a much worse press than they deserve. And I think um, obviously you've said you're all big fans of them. Are you all big fans of them period? Or are you big fans of them? certain eras where do you sit in the machine head camp right come on Bez. <laughs> i um bear my eyes uh and the more things change yeah uh, really my when i was really really into machine head yeah uh you know burning red came out and that was still amazing you know um and all the, all the rest. That was very, that was like really when I was. I mean, when they, when they came out with like you know the blackening and stuff, that was still 
that was just like, wow, as if they come back out with this. Mm. Um, but since you know, I've heard, I've heard stuff since, and it's it's like you know, it's it's good, it's good stuff. It's awesome, but mm. they don't have the same, no, same no, kind agree. of like you know, look to me as back. I mean, back back then when they were doing like you know, the more things changing that I was, I was you know, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, sure. So you know, I was, I was just I like think- blown away from it all then. So, but yeah. I think, you know, the, the, the great thing about Machine Head is that it, although we aren't into the sort of the later stuff that's come out, like I say, we're a bit bit of a dinosaur now. Yeah. So we don't pay as much of attention as we did when we were young. But yeah, I think yeah. Machine Head have cracked the fact that anyone that's young now listening to Machine Head, that new stuff that they do is just as epic as the old yeah. stuff was to us. Yeah. yeah, you know so those albums. I don't even know the last three albums that have come out. You know, but but I know that they're still such a driving force after all these years. And kids now are going to that. Obviously, finding Machine Head on those albums, mm. and the fact that they're still massive, huge, epic albums. And then yeah. the kids are so lucky because they've got such a backlog of albums to go on to, which they probably don't find the older albums as good as the new stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because obviously, you know, you know what I mean? Even though uh, and we, see, we see it from the other way. So I think that they're, they're one of few bands that have managed to... The guy's sort of, the time, really, really. Yeah, that to stay on top of that game all the time is, is yeah. a massive achievement. So so it, you can it, appreciate that. Sorry, Bez, go on. No, I was just saying you can really appreciate that fact. Yeah, yeah. So was it, was it a tough choice which song to cover? Because... Or was, was that all the band? Did everyone say that's the one we're going to do? We um, oh, we skipped through quite a few different tracks um, from, from from various artists. We were originally um, going to do quite a number of tracks, um, but no, I think I think once we'd all sort of decided, you know, we didn't know if we wanted to do ultra modern songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, to try and grab some attention from from sort of up to date people, <laughs> and and or we didn't know whether to do something that really influenced us. And I think eventually we just thought, you know what, we've got to play what we love. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. There's no point in us playing a song that we think is current because that's what people should be wanting to hear. You know what I mean? So I think eventually, yeah. And and blood, the sweat, the tears, sort of just felt like it was in a similar vein to what we do. And we mm-hmm. didn't we didn't want something that we'd have to spend hours trying to recreate, you know what I mean? We just wanted a couple of couple of blasts, get it so we can get to the end and then record it. So so blood the sweat the tears sort of just fit that bill really. Yeah, sure. And I think it's great. I mean, if you if people haven't seen it, it's worth checking it out on your Facebook page just just to see you guys nail a song that uh, we haven't heard for a while. So it's it's a Yeah, cheers. Um, talking of social media, you said you don't do it that much. So who who's who's the main person that does your social media? Have you got? Is it Tim, or do you all take a hand in it? I think we all kind of take a hand in it, really, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I think Bez does the majority of the sort of day to day postings. You know, yeah. sort of the the the, f- the photos of what's currently going on, you know, or or whether we're putting some old gig photos up. Bez generally runs the majority of, of that. Um, and then for, and then for the big posts, sort of the 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 business posts, um, <laughs> yeah. that business sort of, that will sets the majority of that up. Will's when it comes to logistics and organisation <laughs> and and stuff and getting in contact with people. Will's the man. I mean, that's what he does. That's what he's done for his job for as long as I've known him. So, so we sort of just let him get on with it, really. Because if we all get involved, it just it just ends up a mess. Well, if he's happy to do it, then it makes sense to let him do it, isn't it? As well. So yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, what's the most bizarre thing you've had posted on Facebook in comments? Have you had any real weird shit? Some guy from Guatemala demanding that you go and play there or anything? Oh, no. we've had some. We we have a guy always asks us to go to Australia. 
Yeah. <laughs> it, it up a few times saying, when you're going to gig in Australia? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a logistic mission to go to Wales, not let alone uh, <laughs> let alone Australia. <laughs> yeah. So, so talking of gigs, obviously you've been gigging for if we take the last year or so out of it, best part of ten years. You've played yeah mm-hmm. some, some pretty good gigs. You've had a good few support slots, and you've played at uh, quite a few of the big festivals. I know you've done Bloodstock a couple of times, haven't you? And uh, or yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, hard rock hell and places like that. So, um, give me a couple of the highlights from your your life on the road, and uh, maybe a couple for the early ones, and then the more later ones. What's the biggest, biggest, and the most memorable? Uh, God, there's so many. Um, and the weird thing is, a lot of them kind of like, just like you don't even know when they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> when you do it for so long, everything just kind of like melds into melds into one. So like the stuff that we've done, like with Skindred, yeah, uh, at the Empire, and that that was you know that was cool. Bloodstock shows, amazing. Yeah, that, that was the Bloodstock show was awesome, wasn't it? Because that was just kind of like we, we put us on yeah. three Jaeger stage, um, which you know we were we were ecstatic about doing anyway. Yeah, um, but we you know we weren't expecting anywhere near the response that we got. Sure. It was just like all of a sudden I know where, you know, we, we got this huge crowd in the middle of a field looking <laughs> yeah, up yeah, this, yeah. Tiny, this, this tiny little stage and stuff and then, you know, people throwing stage dive and stuff. Throwing themselves <laughs> off the stage and stuff like I like and he's like, this is supposed to be an acoustic stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, things like that and then obviously the following year when the Astor's back, like, you know, starting the whole thing off on the Sophie stage. Yeah. Walking out in front of that kind of, you know, that amount of people. It's nuts, but then there's there's the shows that are so much kind of smaller that have such a massive impact. Like you know when we played with Snot, yeah, you know played at Snot, yeah, at, that, that, yeah. Our, yeah, our home venue, like you know the underground stuck on Trent, mm-hmm. just the most amazing thing because they're such a massive influence to us and things like that. And you know playing there, we played there again with Discharge, and yeah. You know, you, you, these bands you can't you can't compete with playing with these yeah, these yeah. people. You know, it doesn't matter what size yeah. the band is. Um, yeah. You know, I don't like Paul. Yeah, I I mean, for me, one of the most iconic gigs we did was the Snot. Yeah, just because of the influence that they'd had, and we'd always said from the minute go that you know Snot was the band that was sort of the driving force behind sure. our sound. And then, yeah. and then just to get to get a gig, which which is by no no means the biggest gig we've done, was that was one of the turning shows for me that sort of always stuck. Mm-hmm. And then a uh, Hammerfest, yeah, just oh yeah, just, just the weekend of Hammerfest, you know, being the whole event and just getting absolutely obliterated, <laughs> and just <laughs> and just with us all being sort of parents and, you know, and, and living, it was just nice weekend of just yeah, remembering that you're in do, band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, remembering you're human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so that, 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 but yeah, we've had, we've had so many good, there's, there's not many bad ones we've had, to be honest. Yeah. No, we've, we've been every, every, It's been, uh, it's been cool. We've, yeah, we've never, never had a bad reception off anywhere, have we? No, no. But yeah. I think Blood's, Bez was right in saying that Bloodstock was the turning point. Yeah. We, we, with us getting such a, a mental reception on on the so on the Jaeger stage. And then everything just sort of seemed to boom after that. And and then we got the 2014 one, and it was just we'd been gigging that heavily. Yeah. Um, we we were just sort of it, nothing was it, nothing was it was a mission, was it? It was just like it was we were so sort of in tune at that point because we've been gigging so much. Yeah. So that 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 twenty fourteen was probably my most enjoyable show I've ever had on stage. Yeah, I mean so it's a big tent to fill, isn't it? To see that many yeah. people there is oh yeah. It's great. And of course everyone's wankered on a Thursday night at stock, aren't they? So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the good thing is the good thing is about opening up on a Thursday night is there's no other stages on. 
Exactly, yeah. So sure, you, can, you go out, everyone's gone to that tent. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's but it doesn't matter who's playing. You know? Yeah. yeah. You've got a mosh fit for Chaz and Dave. Yeah. So it's it was it was easy pickings, <laughs> really. Um, you know. Sure, sure. So just a couple of other questions before the timer runs out. One a bit of a stupid question, but I wondered have you ever had a complaint for someone that's Googled you and ended up on the wrong website? <laughs> Uh, we do warn people. Hey, no, but we do always warn people. Yeah, when we do, when we say, like you know, oh, you know, you can find it, like you know, just go on Google balls deep, and I'll get to like just be careful. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've ever had had a like a complaint about it, but on we've done certain radio shows and stuff and interviews before where we've had to call ourselves alls deep. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and not actually, you know, and sort of or make up a reason for why we came up for the band name that it was some sort of World War Two fact. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I think the guy told <laughs> about water mines being lowered or something, and it was a radio code or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we, we've had a few few people basically saying, you know, we need to avoid telling people what you're called. <laughs> Well, wow. okay, fine. So let's just wrap up with the the details and, and a bit of plug in for the for the new album. Um, it's out on the twenty fifth of this month. Yep. Yeah, twenty fifth. Yeah. Okay. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth so of June. Where can people find it? So it'll be on all your uh, down download down streaming whatever it's called <laughs> sites <laughs> like Spotify okay. and, and all that. Like, yeah, all that malarkey. Yeah. So uh, you'll be able to stream it and uh, it'll be on our band camp um, where you'll be able to uh, download it by a higher quality, obviously higher quality than, than the streaming, yeah. than the streaming sites and for anyone who wants to send us some cash. Brilliant. And then there'll be, we, we've got a package coming out, you know, with a, um, if you buy the, the audio and we got t-shirts and hoodies and a, a limited edition tarot card with the album artwork on. Um, but all, all the information is on our Facebook page and, and Instagram. And So will the, will the artwork be are you using the artwork on a t-shirt? Cause the artwork is brilliant. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, it's all there. It's on a, it's on a t-shirt and then we've got a hoodie as well. Magic. And, uh, yeah. Great. And have you had any reviews in yet of the the back of the, the album? Currently, we've had one. Yeah. One we had one drop last week, uh, which is again is on the Facebook page. Brilliant. Um, and we've got some on the way, so we'll be posting them up in in due course. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I'll get yours done in the in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, it's it's in the list of stuff to review. Not quite there yeah. yet. Yeah. A few to get through. Very much. But, uh, brilliant. Yeah, I look forward to it. Great. It's been a pleasure chatting to you, lads. Um, thanks very much for your time. And um, we'll catch up again when the uh, the next one drops, maybe, and uh, see how it Definitely, goes. Yeah. If you get yeah, over to Wales, much. I'll try and get and come along and see you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice to see you guys. Thank Take you care. Take it easy. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Make sure you keep up to date with future episodes by subscribing to our channels. For more information on this podcast, or for all the latest music news, reviews, interviews and more, head over to our website, www.theraziseedge.rocks.